Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Kaplan's USMLE Step 2 CK Q-Blast. I'm Dr. Jason Farnasiak, and we're here again with this week's clinical vignette. As always, we will go through the right and wrong answers and review the high-yield topics, which will help increase your score on the boards and help you take better care of patients on the wards. With that, let's get started. A 42-year-old woman comes to the physician because of a four-month history of intermittent abdominal cramps and diarrhea. She has had episodes of skin flushing lasting from 2 to 15 minutes, most pronounced in the head and neck areas. She denies nausea, vomiting, constipation, or blood in stools. Her medical history is unremarkable, and she takes no medications. A grade 3 out of 6 murmur is heard along the mid-left sternal border. The lungs are clear to auscultation. Abdominal examination shows no abnormalities. Laboratory studies show urinary excretion of 5-hydroxyindoleacetic acid of 75 milligrams a day, which is much above normal. A CT scan of the liver demonstrates a 2-centimeter lesion. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Is it A, carcinoid tumor that is metastatic, B, cholangiocarcinoma, primary, hepatocellular carcinoma, also primary, a mucinous adenocarcinoma of the colon, which is metastatic, or a squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus, which is metastatic. In this case, the correct answer is A, carcinoid. The other options in this case do not secrete hormonally active substances. Let's go through them in turn. Cholangiocarcinoma in B arises in the bile duct epithelium, which results in painless jaundice, pertus, and abdominal pain, weight loss, and fever. Hepatocellular carcinoma choice C arises in the setting of liver damage, typically cirrhosis, hepatitis B or C, aflatoxin exposure, or hemochromatosis. Mucinous adenocarcinoma of the colon typically causes iron deficiency, anemia because of blood loss, and bowel obstructions. Squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus choice E causes symptoms with swallowing. It's unlikely to cause diarrhea. Let's review carcinoid syndrome. Vasoactive substances, including serotonin, are secreted, and this causes cutaneous flushing, abdominal cramps, bronchospasm, and diarrhea. The most common cause is an intestinal carcinoid tumor, which is metastatic to the liver. It's important to note that it's metastatic. Those that are not metastatic have vasoactive substances that are secreted but are cleared from the portal circulation by the liver. So you don't have carcinoid syndrome. Non-metastatic tumors can produce carcinoid syndrome if they originate in the lung or in the ovary because they don't go for, undergo first-pass metabolism in the portal circulation. It can cause toxic damage to the heart, causing right-sided endocardial fibrosis with pulmonary stenosis and tricuspid regurgitation. The diagnosis is based upon a urinary metabolite of serotonin, which is secreted by the carcinoid tumor. Our high-yield take-home points here, carcinoid syndrome is described as cutaneous flushing, abdominal cramps, and diarrhea caused by excessive circulating serotonin. Metastasis of a primary intestinal carcinoid tumor to the liver or a primary lung or, or ovarian carcinoid tumor can result in these type of symptoms. The small bowel is the most common site of the carcinoid tumor. And the small bowel tumors do not typically cause carcinoid syndrome because the liver metabolizes and clears the portal circulation of the excessive serotonin before it reaches the rest of the body. So that's our high yield clinical vignette today with our high yield take home points to increase your score on the boards and help you take better care of patients when they're admitted to the wards. I'm Dr. Jason Fernasiak, and we'll see you again real soon for another high yield topic.